I had always loved working as a park ranger at Shenandoah National Park. The beauty and tranquility of the park made it an extraordinary place to spend my days. One evening, my colleague and friend, Mark, and I were assigned to investigate a fence breach alarm. Park rangers often had to deal with a variety of potential hazards, and the alarm could signal anything from a fallen branch to a dangerous animal, or even criminal activity. As Mark and I headed towards the fence, we speculated about what could have caused the breach. When we arrived at the scene, we found a massive tear in the fence, as if something enormous had burst through it. We exchanged nervous glances, knowing this was no ordinary situation. We decided to wait for backup before venturing further. As we stood there, the hairs on the back of my neck stood up. I spotted a large, muscular, wolf-like creature entering the park through the breach. I nudged Mark and pointed towards the creature. It appeared to challenge us, grinning menacingly, and its eyes locked onto ours. My heart pounded in my chest as we realized that we were dealing with something we had never encountered before. Before we could react, the creature lunged at Mark, who tried to fend it off with his flashlight. It swiped at him with a clawed paw, leaving a deep gash on his arm. Mark cried out in pain, and I struggled to find my voice to call for help. But, as quickly as it had attacked, the creature turned and walked away, leaving me shaken and terrified. My friend was unconscious. I tried to wake him up. He didn't move. His heart stopped beating. The encounter left me with the unnerving feeling that we had seen something out of this world. I agreed never to share the story, fearing disbelief and ridicule from my peers. The memory of that night haunted me, and I couldn't shake the feeling that the creature was still out there, lurking in the shadows of Shenandoah National Park. My buddy's mom was hiking alone on a mountain trail in Utah. The way she tells it, she was coming around a bend in the woods when, ahead of her up a hill, she saw a girl sliding down the hill towards the trail. Before the girl reached the bottom, she disappeared inexplicably. The girl never made any sound, but her facial expression made it look like she was screaming. This spooked my buddy's mom, so she left. When she got home, she told my friend the story and they googled deaths in the area. They were going over headshots when she stopped him and pointed to a picture she swore was the girl from the trail. It linked to an article of a rock slide on the trail she was hiking two years earlier. A few years back I was in Costa Rica volunteering for a sea turtle conservative project way out in the middle of nowhere. We were on the coast, but we were probably 40 minutes 50 miles from the nearest village. Anyway, we collecting turtle eggs and reburying them in a protected part of the beach so poachers couldn't take them. The protected part of the beach was a few hundred yards from our camp and it had to be watched 24-7. One of the other volunteers and I were assigned the 1 a.m. 7 a.m. shift. So it's about 2.45 a.m. and I'm sitting there in the jungle watching the protected air of the beach while reading Lord of the Rings, and all of a sudden a red dot pops up on my chest. Like the kind of dot you'd see if someone was pointing a laser at you. The other volunteer was asleep in the chair next to me. I looked around, sat perfectly still, and after about 30 seconds the dot disappeared and I never found out where it came from. As a cop, my experience with the supernatural was very limited to a few traumatizing encounters with demons that left me with a deep fear for life. However, this particular account is told by a friend of mine who is a fellow officer in a small town in Minnesota. And this was back when he was a rookie on patrol. One night, he told me about an incident where they were dispatched to a call at a local residence. He said that upon arrival, his sergeant spotted somebody running through the backyard of the house. It wasn't until they got closer did they see a black figure dashing into a nearby grove of trees. They radioed dispatch for backup, cautiously approaching the grove with guns drawn, ready to shoot on sight as assuming it was a suspect trying to escape. 
As they got closer, a faint moaning sound broke the silence which caused him and my partner to freeze in their tracks, where they heard a thud followed by a loud crack of a branch breaking. He looked back at his partner and simply shrugged as my friend slowly pushed forth the trees. He saw an apparition that gave him goosebumps even though it wasn't cold outside. A stout humanoid creature began to emerge from behind a tree not more than 20 feet away, quickly making its way towards a clearing with a full moon causing them to see a silhouette of it against the moonlight. He said that what he saw was this hulking black figure with chalk white skin and a bald head with no ears or nose or really much features at all but could sense a deep malice emanating from this thing. All my friend could think about was his family as he slowly reached for his firearm until something slammed into him knocking him over onto the ground. What grabbed hold of him wasn't human. It had a hand around his neck which seemed gnarled and leathery except its fingers were three times longer. The only way he described these demon hands gripping around his neck is that it felt like being a victim of a boa constrictor, and it would only tighten its grip to the point where you would die from lack of oxygen. He also explained that he could see a mouth full of razor teeth opening up as if ready to bite his head off, but thank God for a police siren that caused this thing to release him and vanish. Then my friend explained that what happened next was even more bizarre than the attack itself. One car showed up while the nether approached from a different direction with her lights turned on shining directly into where this figure ran and vanished. After a brief investigation and questioning they declared it a false alarm. My friend said that a couple of months after this encounter the local sheriff passed away due to a sudden heart attack despite being a very healthy man in the prime of his life. He told me that he later found out years later that a strange police officer was picked up back then and claimed he saw a monster dressed in a police uniform before committing self-harm shortly after his arrest under mysterious circumstances. Now when he made the claim of monster, I'm assuming he meant as an individual, not an actual monster. He said this happened at a time where strange people... my shift involved the night shift. I got a call to an old abandoned house on the outskirts of town. I wasn't too worried about it. I thought I'd be stuck dealing with a vagrant or a squatter. But as I walked up to the door, I realized something was off. As I approached the porch, I felt an overwhelming sense from inside that I shouldn't go any further. But even though my mind was screaming at me to turn back, I couldn't help myself. There's nothing more dangerous than that thin line we all have to cross, especially in our field of work as officers. I have every right to be here, I told myself, reaching for the handle. But just as I was about to grab it, I heard a noise coming from within. I drew my gun, held with both hands, and forced myself inside. It didn't take long for me to realize that nobody else was in here. I wasn't sure what I was expecting to see or find, but clearly this place had been vacant for a while. As soon as I had thoroughly checked everything out, I started back towards my squad car. However, I heard another sound behind me. I turned around and I saw it. It was human, I think, but its eyes were like black pits that went on forever. I couldn't even tell where I was looking when I looked into him. And then the smell hit me, an awful stench like I had never experienced before. Rotting meat left to fester in the sun for days and sulfur. I can still smell it sometimes, even though I haven't seen or heard of what it was since. I know this is a very short story, but I'm not really sure what I saw that night. But I know one thing for certain, whatever that being was, God help us all if I ever have to meet it again. I grew up in Park City, Utah and hiked all the mountains there as a kid. Knew my bearings, what plants I could eat, what to stay away from and had good common sense to stay away from ridges, old mining caves and shit. Few years later in 1980 I was at the YMCA Camp Rogers Summer Camp in Kamas, Utah. Our camp leader, we were all in groups, took us on an overnight hike. He got us lost and this was when there were no cell phones. We hiked and spent another night where it rained on us so no fire. We hiked the entire next day and were exhausted, ran out of water and food. 
When we hiked over a side ridge, I immediately recognized the place because I had been there as a preteen cutting firewood with my foster dad. I knew where water was in the road, so I told the camp leader I knew exactly where we were and I'm heading that direction. At first he completely refused to believe me, so I said F him and began hiking towards where I knew the road was in water, and eventually most of the kids followed me. Within a half hour I had us all out of there on a road and flagged down a camper. I was 12 at the time. A year later, another dumbass YMCA camp leader led a group of boys up on top of a ridge where they jumped from one rock to another rock, lower with a gap, and realized they couldn't jump back. They all had to be rescued. Death the camp. I live in western New York. At the complex my fiancé and I share is heavily populated. Lots of houses on the outside of the property as well, but directly behind our building is a very large section of dense forest. When we first moved here three years ago, we used to go out there to smoke joints and such as we didn't want to on our back deck. Shortly afterwards we decided the woods were no buono so we would just smoke on our deck. So anyways I have had two very strange occurrences in the last two weeks. Also, I don't know if it was a crawler that I saw. Heard but I figured I would post here and see what everyone's opinion is. Anyways about two weeks ago I'm out on my deck or patio. We live on the second floor and there's a staircase leading up to the door that takes you up the stairs to the third floor, and whatnot. And I'm smoking a cigarette. It's about 2 or 3 a.m. and I hear a bunch of rustling at the far end of the parking lot behind our building, out in the woods. So I look over there and all I hear is this loud screech. I assumed it was some type of animal at first but it kept walking a few feet, and then screeching. It did this repeatedly until it was almost in front of me but still in the woods if that makes sense. At this point I feel like something or someone is watching me, so I walk down into the parking lot and as soon as I did I hear the screech but even louder this time moving towards me. I ran as fast as I've ever run in my entire life back up the steps into my apartment shutting and locking the door. About ten minutes later I open the glass door. We have a screen door on the very outside. And I still hear the screeching but even further down and deeper into the woods. I haven't heard it since that night. I really don't believe it was an animal because I've lived relatively secluded most of my life at my dad's house. And I heard animals and bugs and all that all the time so I don't know it was just really weird. The most recent event occurred last weekend. I was dead tired after I got out of work at 11 p.m. and I was out on the deck smoking again, and at some point I fell asleep in my chair out there. So I wake up it's about 3.30 a.m. and I stood up, stretched and then lit another cigarette. Well at this point I have shaken off the sleepies and I'm kind of just scanning the tree line. As I'm doing this, near the far right corner of the parking lot we have those cattails or whatever they're called, the tall grass crap. While looking I lifted my eyes up because whatever was over there caught my attention right away. I swear whatever this was, it was maybe seven, seven and a half feet tall, kind of hunched over and just staring at me. I noticed no other features that stuck out just long limbs and a blank face. As soon as I looked at it, it turned and kind of galloped into the mouth of the woods and was just gone like that. I don't know if it was a crawler or just an animal making me look stupid but whatever it was gave me a creepy feeling. But that sums up my events. If I seem crazy then do tell me so because I'd rather that then be what it could be law. Let me know what you think and thank you. I briefly participated in missionary work in the Congo in the late 1980s and can say with my hand on my heart that I and six other locals witnessed a JBIFOFI scurry. Across the road or clearing into the bush just five feet away from us, about an hour outside of Gamboma. It looked exactly like a long-legged tarantula but was about the size of a medium-sized dog, pit bull, or something. Of course, everyone I've ever told says yes, yeah, sure. Just a big spider, monkey, or sloth, but I know what I saw and feel lucky to have seen it. I remember my first thought was not fear, 
but just I wish I had a film camera. The locals were shocked too. I hope they still exist out there. The Jaba Fofi, also known as the Congolese giant spider, is a type of large arachnid cryptid said to inhabit the forests of the Congo. Eyewitnesses have stated that the giant arachnids dig a shallow tunnel under tree roots and camouflage with a large screen of leaves. Then they create an almost invisible web between their burrow and a nearby tree, stringing the whole area with a network of trip lines. Some oblivious animal, that's likely soon to end up on the creature's menu, will trip the line alerting the spider. The victim will then be chased into the web. This type of predatory behavior is similar to that of several species of trapdoor spiders. Natives claim the Jabaya Foefi eggs are pale yellow-white, in shape like peanuts, and the hatchlings are bright yellow with a purple abdomen. Their coloration becomes darker and brown as they mature. Some of the peoples indigenous to the regions in the Congo where the JBIFOFI has been seen assert that the spider was once quite common, but has since become very rare. The very first sighting of the JBIFOFI by a Western observer was in the 1890s near Lake Nyasa, during which British missionary Arthur John Symes and his men came upon one of the creatures. His men got themselves tangled in an enormous web and two giant spiders which were two and four feet in length. Male and female came out of their web and attacked them. Symes was bitten but managed to escape after shooting one of them with his pistol. He subsequently developed symptoms including a deathly pallor, severe chills, and swelling around the area where he was bitten and became delirious before dropping into unconsciousness. He ultimately succumbed to these effects and died. I was house-sitting for a friend's family. They lived in the country. Not BFE, but the neighbors were far enough away that you had privacy without a set of binoculars. I had been there a million times and was well acquainted with the property. Their large dog was fond of me and would follow me around casually. Before bed I let him outside to do his thing. He's sniffing around, he pees, and before he turns to come back in, something gets his attention. He turns facing out away from the house, hackles up, and freezes. Doesn't make a sound. I can only see him because of the single porch light, and I can't see much further out than that, pure darkness. I call him a few times and he ignores me. Suddenly he turns and sprints toward me and barges in the door, tail between his legs. He goes straight to his kennel and won't come to me. I slammed and locked the door, turned off the interior lights and turned on every exterior light, scanned the area with a flashlight and just couldn't see anything. I let him sleep on the couch with me that night even though I really didn't sleep. The next day I went walking out there to see what I could see, no signs of anything unusually. I told them about what happened and they thought it was really weird for the dog to act like that. It's not unusual for coyotes to come around but he usually fiercely barks and growls at them and scares them off. I'm sure it was an animal and maybe he was just scared because I was scared, but regardless, gee damn. Not knowing what's out there is way scarier than knowing. You hear that, horror film writers. My journey began in the lush, dense forests of the Pacific Northwest. As I trekked through the undergrowth, I couldn't help but feel a thrill of excitement. I was finally on the trail of the creature I'd been obsessed with for years. Along the way, I met other hikers who shared their own tales of strange encounters. One woman, Sarah, recounted a bone-chilling experience from her childhood. She and her family had been camping when they heard heavy footsteps and guttural growls outside their tent. They never saw the creature responsible, but the next morning they discovered massive footprints around their campsite. She was convinced it had been Bigfoot. As we gathered around the campfire one night, exchanging stories, the atmosphere grew tense. The fear was palpable, and it seemed like we were all on edge. We decided it would be best to stick together for the remainder of our journey through the woods. The following day, as we trekked deeper into the forest, we stumbled upon a set of fresh tracks. They looked eerily similar to the one Sarah had described from her childhood encounter. 
Our excitement was tempered by an underlying sense of dread, but we pressed on, hoping to finally catch a glimpse of the elusive creature. That night, we set up camp in a small clearing. As darkness fell, we huddled together for warmth and comfort, our eyes scanning the shadows for any sign of movement. The forest was eerily quiet, and we couldn't shake the feeling that we were being watched. Suddenly, a blood-curdling howl pierced the silence. It was unlike any animal sound I'd ever heard, and it sent shivers down my spine. We were all on high alert, clutching our makeshift weapons and scanning the darkness for the source of the noise. Then, as if out of nowhere, one of our group members, Jack, began to convulse violently. His eyes rolled back in his head, and his body contorted into unnatural shapes. We watched in horror as his features shifted, growing more bestial by the second. Before our very eyes, Jack transformed into a monstrous werewolf. Fangs bared, he lunged at us, snarling and snapping. We scattered, each of us fleeing for our lives. Our search for Bigfoot forgotten in the face of this new, terrifying threat. We fought for survival, using every ounce of strength and cunning to evade the werewolf. In the end, it was Sarah who saved us all. Armed with a silver knife, she plunged it into the beast's heart, causing it to collapse, lifeless, at our feet. As we regrouped, battered and bruised, we couldn't help but marvel at the irony of our situation. We adventured into the wilderness to find Bigfoot, only to discover a shape-shifting werewolf in our midst. As we made our way back to civilization, we vowed never to forget the harrowing experience that had bonded us together. I decided to make this post because I've never come across a story that lined up with the beings I saw. When I was in high school, me and four other friends were hanging out and we decided to go to a park area at a nearby lake. So we park in the parking lot and start heading down the path that leads to this gazebo-covered picnic area with about six picnic tables under it. It's around 8 minutes 9 o'clock during the summer so the sun is setting and it's starting to get dark. My friends and I are being loud and joking with each other and not really paying attention to everything around us but I notice that there are two guys under the gazebo. So I turn and in my like, guys, guys, there are people over there. So we look them for a second and there's one guy that has his arms crossed and leaning up against one of the gazebo posts and the other is sitting at one of the picnic tables with his arms on the table. They look completely proportionate and human. One guy had a hoodie on with his hood up and the other guy had a hat on. So I yell, hey, what's going on? They don't say anything or move. I decided to walk over to them and one of my friends decided to follow me but they were about 5 to 10 feet behind me. Him walking up to the gazebo and ask again, hey, what's up guys? No response. Him still not noticing anything weird about them other than the fact that they aren't responding. I get about 2 feet away from them and I approached in a way so that I had one to my left and one to my right. I look at the guy leaning on the post and notice I can't really see in details of where his clothes ended or if he had a mouth or eyes and this guy is about four feet away from me. Then the guy sitting down is about a foot away from me and I look down at him and see his skin, his clothes were the same. As in they were like this fuzzy almost pixelated black. He had a perfectly human shaped face but no eyes, no nose holes, no mouth. At that moment I just freeze and it takes all my strength to get my body to start stepping back from them. I can't speak and there is no way I can turn around. It felt like my energy was being drained out of me. This whole time that was probably mere seconds but felt like a long time, they didn't move an inch or speak. I finally stepped back far enough and me and my friend that followed me to off running down the path and our other friends followed. It definitely was an I should not be here vibe from them and very bad energy coming from them. My other friend saw them pretty close and felt the same way I did. I can't explain it but if anyone has had something like this happen to them, I would love to hear about it. Okay, so first off these stories are 100% true. Most were told by family and friends through the years. 
along with some of my own encounters in the rural mountains and ridge lines of my county. Of course, as with all creepy stories to give you a good scare, take them with a grain of salt. However, I must still say that these stories are as real as me sitting here writing this up. I hope you all find these as interesting as I do. I have grown up in eastern Kentucky for several years since the age one my family both sides have grown up in the rural Appalachias. Their whole lives as well but as with modern times moved to the small town nestled here in a valley situated in between rolling hills and deep ridge lines. Where the following stories take place is a rural area nestled deep in the Appalachian Mountains. It's got a name and it's considered a county however the area where my dad's family grew up in within this area. And where these stories come from is more like a collection of deep ridges and mountain folks than anything else. Just to clear up any confusion that this is in an actual town. During the early days of the settlers, these mountains were home to the Cherokee Indians. Many cemeteries in this area has actually around 30 to 40 graves of Native Americans buried there. Marked with stones and rocks rather than a more traditional Indian burial routine. In the 18 old George Washington's aide de camp Carl Grayson was bestowed upon him a 70,000 acre piece of land which now is where my town is located it today. Story 1. In the 1970s or 80 seconds my mom and her aunt along with their small cousins were driving in an empty road just outside of town when they created the top of a hill where an abandoned farmhouse stood they stopped their car in its tracks. When they saw a massive hovering saucer-shaped craft hovering over the house, frightened my mother and her aunt booked it out of there at a high rate of speed scared they continued down the mountain back to town quickly. However, when they looked in the river view mirror they saw the craft coming after them at a high rate of speed. Tailing the car and keeping up with it they attempted multiple times to evade the craft but to no avail. It chased them for over a mile back to town until finally just at the edge of the county road that leads back into the town it finally disappeared. My mother has told this story at least 100 times to family and friends most of which believe her, as they too have seen strange lights in the sky and in around various areas of the community. Though some don't she drew me a picture of the spacecraft a few years ago which I still have. It's gray and almost metallic looking by the way she drew it. It is red lights on all edges of the bottom of the craft along with a few green lights on the sides of it. If anyone wants to see the sketch I will happily oblige. Story 2 When my mother was a child old enough to know when something is going on was at home with her parents and siblings. One night a man whom her mother and family already knew and were acquainted with barged into the house scared out of his wits. He lived in a cabin deep within the woods some miles away during his stay there he reported poltergeist activity, orbs, and paranormal activity within the property and house itself. He would go on to tell my grandmother that reportedly he was tormented all night by a demon who threw pots and pans, glasses, and even furniture at him. This went on for almost the entire night it would throw them completely out of the cabinets almost hitting him. With it it also reportedly started knocking and tapping on the sides of the house and thumping the walls and ceiling. Finally he mustered up the nerves to utter the Lord's Prayer and attempt to rebuke it in the name of. Jesus Christ this seemed to piss it off even more and causing it to become even more aggressive and now would try to kill him with more heavier objects. He ran from the house and spent around seven to eight hours walking through the woods and rural country roads back to my grandmother's house. While on his way to the house he reported that he could hear footsteps trailing him in the woods and next to the road but he can't see anything it continued this for several hours until he finally reached their house. Story 3 In the 90 seconds in town sat a white brick house at the top of a small hill a man and his wife lived for several years the man was in his 40 seconds or 50 seconds and the woman somewhere around the same age I believe. Anyways, one day while my mother was working at a local gas station where the woman also coincidentally worked at the man, had called her saying that something was wrong with the gas in the house and he was going to go look at it to see if he could fix it. The gas was located in the basement. He went downstairs and laid on his back and crawled up under the thing to see what had happened. He lit a match and immediately the house exploded sending rubble everywhere and a massive fire hall. 
In smoke that could be seen throughout town, the man's wife, who saw the explosion from the gas station, ran home to discover the house gone and nothing left but its foundations. The man's body, as one might expect in a situation like this, was blown into pieces with body parts even littering some neighboring houses. Since then, it has become a local legend that the man's spirit haunts the house that was built on the land where the original one stood. The show Ghost Hunters, or maybe another ghost hunting TV series, actually filmed an episode here because of the experiences by the home's inhabitants. Everything from pots and pans rattling and stuff being thrown around to actual manifestations inside the resident. I was on a ruck runner all day land navigation course for training and it's getting real dark in the woods and I get the feeling him being watched. I figure it's one of the instructors shadowing me so I stop and look out into the brush off the little game trail I was on but I couldn't make anything out. I shake it off and keep on my way because this is timed evolution. Then I hear loud thumping footsteps and it sounds bipedal and huge. I freeze up and then my natural night vision was kicking in a couple of minutes ago and I see this big ass tree and I see something move behind it and I figure it's just a hog or black bear because they frequent the area. Also in trying to rationalize, I stand up tall and growl kinda throaty under my breath not really loud at all and not two seconds later this monstrous or demonic growl like in the movies when that monster roars like that happens. I'm a man of science, but at the time all I'm thinking is paranormal and I use a bolt laser beam half out of there until I make it to a checkpoint and catch my breath and try to explain to the watchmen what happened. Naturally, they told me it was a bear and to stop being a bitch. This bothers me till this day. I have been to the zoo and heard lions roar. I grew up hunting with my family and heard grizzlies too and this wasn't that. It was so loud and alien like something I have never heard before and loud like a metal concert. I felt real small and vulnerable that night. Hey everyone. Last night I remembered a time I think I experienced sleep paralysis. I say sleep paralysis because I have no other logical explanation for what had happened. It was years ago, and I couldn't sleep at all. At around 4 a.m. in the morning, the door to my bedroom was opened, and out came a woman, who looked very similar to my mother, only she was eerily pale, and had a crack in her face as if she was made out of porcelain. Her hair was wiry, and she hunched over. My heart was pounding as I saw her, and she said in a low, rumbling tone, to go to bed, but it came across almost like a threat, pointing her long nails at me. I tried to scream, but I couldn't get the word to escape my lips. It was as if they were sewn shut. My family and I went camping every summer on a lake in a very rural part of our state. This lake has no houses on it as it was state land, and I later learned that camping was prohibited but we would load up our aluminum rowboat and make three trips across the lake with enough gear and firewood to last five, seven days. We always camped out on a narrow peninsula that had a clearing big enough for three, four tents and spent our days fishing and swimming. The lake wasn't huge, but in order to hike to where we were camped, it was about five miles from the nearest road. One summer night when I was 11 or 12, I set up my tent further into the woods about 100 feet away from where my parents and younger brother were sleeping. I had recently discovered masturbation and didn't want to put my tent near my parents where they might hear me fapping. Anyhow, things start off like usual. My dad takes me and my brother fishing while my mom starts making her famous camping stir fry and we all have a great night around the campfire. Eventually, we all retire to our tents and sleep for the night. At around 3 a.m., I woke up to the sound of slow footsteps. Crunch, stop, crunch, stop. Closer and closer the sound got. My heart started racing. I was old enough to not feel like a kid, but in that moment I was totally down for the hide under the blankets and the monsters can't get you defense. At that time, my major fears were aliens and Bigfoot 
so I was certain that something was approaching my tent to abduct me and or drag me off into the wilderness. I hunkered down in the fetal position, safe in my sleeping bag, and the sound just kept getting closer. Eventually, the Bigfoot alien was right outside my tent just standing in silence. Then it exhaled with the lung capacity of a woolly mammoth whoosh, dropped a handful of what sounded like jelly beans, turned around, walked back into the forest. I never really got back to sleep, but a few hours later under the safety of the rising sun, I mustered the bravery to leave my tent and survey the area. Directly outside my tent was a pile of deer shit and a couple of fresh tracks. The woods are scary. Thanks for listening. Hope to see you tomorrow, son.